So uh, welcome everybody. My name is Greg Smith. I'm executive director of the Florida Literacy Coalition. Appreciate that you're, you're able to join us today to, to learn about uh, a project that we're very excited about. Um, I don't know if some of you may uh, be familiar with uh, EdTech Makerspace um, and, uh, and EdTech, of course, which is a, a program of world education. Uh, and um, it's my privilege to, to introduce to you uh, Jeff Gomez and, and Rachel Riggs, who will be uh, leading the project to uh, create and curate uh, health literacy resources um, uh, specific to uh, our staying healthy curriculum uh, and in, in some other topics as well. Uh, this is really a, a neat uh, opportunity and project to um, learn about technology uh, and apply that technology in ways that can uh, be beneficial to uh, I think someone may have muted all. Greg, are you, can you unmute? Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't hear any of that, did you? <laughs> no, we heard, we heard a lot of it. It happened like right in the middle. <laughs> did I get, how did I get muted right in the middle? Okay, that's weird. So I'm not sure where I, I left off. Um, did I introduce the two of you? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. well, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, um, Rachel and Jeff. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, everyone. Um, in the in the chat, I'll share one more time. Um, why is Jamboard getting only a two star rating? I'm not sure what that means. Um, on the on the app, I noticed on the Apple on the um, Apple App Store, uh, Jamboard has a two star rating, so that might be what he's referring to. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why, because it's actually my favorite object tool uh, right now. But we just uh, we're chatting in in the chat, um, providing a link. Um, so please feel free to hop in and provide some information in there um, about how you use the Staying Healthy curriculum. Hopefully some of you are actual users of this curriculum and then what you know and what you want to know, so it's sort of a part of a um, KWL about the EdTech makerspace. Uh, that's, that's just something we're gonna engage with as, as we go throughout today with this Jamboard, um, which is one of the resources that we'll be using as part of the Staying Healthy EdTech makerspace. Um, as Greg said for before he was muted, um, actually, if I sound a bit muffled, let me change my, I'm going to switch back because I, um, oh gosh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Sorry. There was someone here. And so I was trying to be polite, but no, no I don't have to be polite anymore. Uh, my name is Jeff Gumis. I am the digital learning senior technical advisor at the EdTech Center at World Education. Um, and with me is Rachel Riggs. Hello, everyone. I am Rachel Riggs. I'm a digital learning specialist at the EdTech Center at World Education. All right, um, so because we only have a half an hour, we want to make sure that we get through uh, a lot of stuff today. So first, we're going to talk about what is an EdTech makerspace. Um, again, if you're in the Jamboard, that's the second frame um, uh, or third frame, excuse me, is if you have any background knowledge on what an EdTech makerspace is. And we'll hop into that in a second. Um, but we will actually provide some some guidance on what an EdTech makerspace is. And then we are going to give an overview of the Staying Healthy project, which is going to uh, utilize the EdTech Makerspace um, project format to develop more mobile-friendly resources to go with this excellent curriculum. Um, so right now the curriculum is, you know, it's a, it's a lot of PDFs uh, that are on a website. And the goal for EdTech Makerspace projects is to take really quality curriculum and expand the options for how you deliver that curriculum, different activities and providing more flexible options that meet sort of the moment that we're in right now where there are um, so many variations in how we are teaching and the ways in which we need to be reaching our learners. Then we'll talk about the project format and what the requirements are for participation in the project. And then a quick sort of the next steps and we got somebody who uh hopefully can mute themselves thank you 
Um, so what is an EdTech makerspace? Before I do that, let's jump into the session jam. And again, if you joined late, I'm gonna paste into the chat a link to this jam board that I see we've got about 12 people in. And so this is one of the tools that we are going to use board. Um, it is a collaborative tool. Um, and so the first, uh, the first jam slide here is what do I know and what do I want to know? So staying healthy is for ESOL learners. Um, and what will we do with ed tech in this project? That is good. Any other, any other what you know um, or what you want to know about the ed tech uh, makerspace, feel free to put it in here or about staying healthy. Um, and we'll use this uh, towards the end because hopefully if there's additional questions, we uh, people can populate it in here. And then the second jam uh, frame in here is, have you used staying healthy curriculum with your learners? So this person, this is really interesting. Um, so we have someone on the call who's using this curriculum in campus and they use it with their classes participating in a health literacy grant. So really interested as we go, this is a very collaborative project format. We're going to be interested in hearing the ways in which you are, if you, if you are doing any sort of tech um, integration with the Staying Healthy curriculum. And here's a great example of someone's actually leveraging it within Canvas. So really interested in hearing more as we work through this project. So what is an ed tech makerspace? Um, Quite frankly, like what we really say is this is professional development with purpose. So uh, at the start of the pandemic, you probably got inundated with all sorts of um, information about different curriculum, free curriculum offers, uh, trainings on different ed tech tools that people can use for managing learners, for assessing learners, for providing collaborative spaces, for doing video conferencing like we do now. And that was all well intended, but also very overwhelming. Um, and the fact of the matter is those trainings stop at here's a tool, here's how you might use it, go. Um, and so the EdTech Makerspace process is focused on learning how to use popular EdTech tools, but then also as part of that learning, immediately applying it to create usable resources, not just for you with your learners, but actually creating resources that others can use. Um, we see a lot of sharing that happens within adult education and all education, but sometimes if I am a teacher that creates something for my learners, you as a teacher who has different learners than me might not be able to really readily use that thing. And so the of that tech makerspace projects is uh, on actually generating resources using the new skills that you have that are usable for all. And in this case, we're going to be doing it with the uh, with the uh, staying healthy curriculum. But just to give some quick examples, so you have a sense of what I'm talking about. Um, the first EdTech makerspace was actually very early on in the pandemic in summer 2020. And we heard that folks really wanted uh, more early literacy level readings. And we were aware of a great resource called Reading Skills for Today's Adults, which has 345 stories, all at early literacy levels. It's online. It has actually audio recordings that help model fluency with reading each of the stories. And they also provide this really great supplement that I'm clicking through now that has vocabulary activities, that has language activities, that has speaking activities and an assessment for the story, and then even writing activities. But the way that they offer this on their website is a Word document. And in the middle of the pandemic, and even now, um, we know not all learners have access to a, a laptop. Uh, most learners also don't ne necessarily use the Microsoft Office Suite. We know more people use um, Google Docs. But even if I, as a learner, was going to be accessing this Word doc, um, on a computer. So say I actually have online access, I actually have a laptop or a Chromebook that allows me to actually you know, work in a document reasonably, um, and I can download this to, I have those skills to do that. Uh, it's, this is still not designed for me to be typing in. This is not designed for me to be, how do I complete this assessment on a computer? 
Um, maybe I'm using highlighting tools, but then how am I submitting that? So it's not necessarily designed for online use. It's really more designed for a teacher to print it out so that they can share it with their students physically. So we thought about well, how can we make these things more accessible so that this great library of content can be made more widely available to learners. And so thinking about what are the activities that are in this supplement that they provide, well, they have a great little you know, overview of vocabulary here. So why don't we use a tool like Quizlet so that we take the words and definitions, put them into Quizlet and suddenly learners can engage with the story vocabulary. And there's learning activities, there's flashcards for them to practice, there's actually games. If they're on a computer, there's typing games that go with the words. So lots of different ways for them to engage with the vocabulary um, and they can do it on their mobile device. Um, so that makes it more accessible. And, and we've created those for all 345 stories. And now those are available to everybody to be able to use and to adapt. And then another activity from that supplement was this assessment that they have at the end. It's a basic multiple choice assessment. And again, on a printout, this is fine. I could, learners can circle their answers and then hand it in. But why couldn't, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Why can't we take that and turn it into a Google form? And so that for every story, we have this assessment, this comprehension quiz in a Google form format, which allows learners to answer on their phone, uh, allows learners to immediately get feedback because it's a Google form and I can set the form settings to allow the learner to get immediate feedback. And so now, and so now we have these three different resources. We have the story, we have the Quizlet vocabulary, and we have the Google form. So what if we take a tool like Wakelet, which allows you to create collections of resources and put it all together so that now I could share this Wakelet with a student that contains a story, calling in sick is the name of this in particular, story. So it deals with health. It also deals with um, workplace skills. Um, they can practice vocabulary on their own using Quizlet because it's a free tool. And so they can practice and, and play games with the story vocabulary. And then when they're ready, they can also take a Google Forms quiz on the story and get immediate feedback. So there's independent reading options for it, or I can share them out based on what I'm doing. And so the result of this first project was 345 of these story collections that include all of those things that we just walked through for each of the 345 stories. And they're designed in a way that teachers can share them as is. So they don't have to do anything other than find a story they think is of interest to their learners and share it or they could copy it over to their own Wakelet account um, and actually adapt or add resources. So maybe it's a story on calling in sick and then there's some activity, maybe like a Jamboard like we just did where uh, students differentiate when is it appropriate or not appropriate to call in sick. Um, and so teachers can adapt and expand upon the readings um, or do whatever they want with it. Rachel was actually a participant in that very first um, EdTech Makerspace, and then she and a colleague decided to apply it to a different curriculum. Thank you, Jeff. Great segue. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and my story is pretty similar. We had a, I was working with beginner level English language learners during the pandemic, and um, we had, we knew about this great resource called the ESL Story Banks from Literacy Minnesota. Um, but when everything went to distance learning, there was really not much we could do with these. And especially with that level of learner, it was difficult to engage them. Um, many of them were joining our Zoom lessons on their phone. Um, and so we wanted to think of a way that we could use this great content and transform it into something where they could be practicing some of these phonics and literacy building concepts on their own outside of class um, and using a mobile device. So what we did was we took the ESL story banks and well, first I asked myself, how can we make these more flexible? <laughs> and we used a tool called Jamboard, which you guys are using right now. Um, and we transformed the um, phonics building activities into interactive Jamboard activities. Now, Neil just shared with us in the chat 
that Jamboard has bad reviews for mobile phone use. So we'll have to maybe look back at this and see if it's the best tool for the mobile phone, but it was the best that we had at the time. So we took Jamboard and with a lot of scaffolding, we were able to make these phonics building activities where people could um, put words together to um, learn kind of the beginning sounds and, and reading skills, building those reading skills with their mobile devices at a low um, reading level. So along with the Jamboard, we took the Jamboard and transformed a lot of those activities for learners. And then we also incorporated um, flippity typing practice and we collected it all into a Wakelet collection. So the participants in our EdTech Makerspace learned how to create Jamboard activities, interactive manipulative activities in Jamboard. And they also learned how to create Wakelet collections. And we worked together on the entire library of story banks. And so at the end of the EdTech Makerspace, we had all of these great Wakelet collections that teachers could use. And actually, if you, um, I think, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I think Jeff, Jeff, can you put the Wakelet collection links into the, into the chat? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'm sorry, I have to launch it in order to do so because I'm showing mine. Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah, you're this right. One, yeah. Oh, you're right, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't figure out who was sharing their screen. All right, it's me. Um, I'm going to share. I, these are, I already posted it in the chat. Oh, but these are the actual collection. Oh, oh, I want you guys to see the activities that we created. So as a result of the EdTech Makerspace, thanks, Jeff. Those are the, the links to our story banks. So we took those PDFs and we all learned the tools together. And then at the end, we came out with these great collections that you guys can turn around and use tomorrow. And I know a lot of the participants in our EdTech Makerspace are using these actively with learners. Um, so that was an exciting project and very similar concept to what we'll be doing with the staying healthy curriculum. Okay. And someone asked just to give some tangibility, uh, they wanted the Marshall uh, reading resources. So I also just shared this. So th this was the result of that first project. Um, but just to understand the volume of things. Um, so for each of the stories, teachers created uh, the Quizlet, the Google form, and the Wakelet, and we worked collaboratively in a spreadsheet very much like this um, to develop it. And so all of these are available as these independent Wakelets, and we, we have different ways that we've, we've shared. Actually, wow, that was not intended, but I clicked on calling in sick, which was the story that was the example. I think that's pretty amazing. It's luck. Um, but here's the vocabulary, here's the reading selection, and here's the uh, comprehension quiz. And so this spreadsheet is available to teachers so that they can grab any single individual asset that they want um, and, and adapt it as they wish, or they can make a copy of this wakelet, which makes it their own wakelet. And again, then they can add or adapt. And so that's, that's a huge part of this process is not just to create really good resources that are engaging, but also to create things that other teachers can pick up and use readily uh, without a ton of extra work to make it something um, available to them. So we're going to walk through how we're going to do the EdTech Makerspace with the Staying Healthy curriculum now. Um, so in frame four of the Jamboard, I'm hoping that you could go in and these are the three tools that we are actually going to be using. So we've talked about all three of these actually. So Rachel's ESL Story Bank used Jamboard um, and used Wakelet as a collection tool. And then the Marshall Reading um, Program, the Reading Skills for Today's Adults Project used Quizlet. But I'm interested because uh, as part of these projects, we do tend to lean on each other um, around uh, sharing how people are using these tools. Like during one of these sessions, hopefully whoever shared that they're using Staying Healthy in Canvas, um, hopefully we'll get an opportunity to talk about, well, how, how are you using it within an LMS? Because that's part of the goal of the learning. It's not just the how-tos around how to create a Quizlet or how to create a Wakelet, but also what are the strategies for using these with students? 
Um, and so just seeing what people have done um, only during webinars, not with my students, um, seeing Jamboard right now. So this is great because this is part of the learning and, and some of the discussion. We love Jamboard because it allows us to ask questions like this and refer back to it throughout presentations, as opposed to having to do new link for this activity and new link for this poll and new link for this. And it is very mobile friendly, although I, I get where that review comes from because you have to design Jamboards according to how they present on a mobile device. And sometimes the controls get really in the way of, of directions, for example. Um, so someone says, I don't know if they've never heard of Quizlet or if it's one of the other tools. Um, <clears throat> Books and Motives, I have not heard of it, but I do not know, I have heard of it, but I do not know what it is. So. Yeah, so this is great. I mean, this, these are the types of, of participants that we want because this is an opportunity to get your feet wet in a controlled manner, to learn about the tool, ways that you can use it, and then also work within templates to design things. Um, so you don't need to be an expert in any of these tools to be able to participate. So the way that we'll work within this project is there's 11 chapters across the two curricula, uh, the high beginning ESOL, staying healthy for beginners, and then staying healthy, which is the original, and that's for intermediate ESOL. And you'll mm -hmm. see overlaps in, in many, and if not all of the chapters, except uh, the uh, staying healthy also has chronic diseases. So they're all topical. And what you will do within your chapter level groups is our first training is gonna be with Jamboard. And we're going to teach you how to create a see, think, wonder, um, which is a language building activity that allows you to take an image that's related to the content that you're about to be working on. So in this case, you see nutrition, obviously, and create this activity that you could share as a front-loaded activity with students. Here's an image. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? Um, we'll also be building a vocabulary lesson using Jamboard that actually walks through a a series of activities. It's a template that you will be understanding how to make a copy of that template. You'll be learning how to edit content within it so that you can change the words and add words and definitions based on your chapter that allows for students to do matching activities, students to do sentence writing activities, students to find an image that deals with that vocabulary word. So they're actually learning digital skills as and then a dialogue on scramble activity. Uh, almost all of the chapters, one does not, um, includes a dialogue in it. And so creating a Jamboard that allows students to manipulate uh, two people's dialogue and put them in the correct order. And then you can use that as a springboard for speaking and listening activities as well. Then we'll also obviously do a Quizlet. And the thing that we'll do with the Quizlet is take the lesson vocabulary and create image uh, Quizlet study sets for the vocabulary that have the words and definitions from the curriculum, and then also include an image. Um, and so that will provide now for every single chapter within the ESL story bank as a result of this project, all of these different interactive activities will be available. And then we'll pull it together in Wakelet, which allows you to create a collection. So that would include the PDF of the lesson and then all of these different activities that support it. So then more people become aware, not just of this curriculum, but have access to additional activities to make it more engaging. A side part of this project, and this is part of our EdTech Makerspace process, is around curating resources. Um, and so you will have opportunities to curate resources, which means finding things that relate to your topic that already exist out there. So if you have, if you teach ESOL learners, you may have heard of Learning Chocolate. And there's a number of, it's a language learning platform that has sequenced activities that work with listening and typing or spelling um, and reading. Um, and so you have the ability to align and go through learning chocolate, find activities that align to your chapter content, and then add it so that this, this gets added to the range of resources that are available. The reading program that we've already done in EdTech Makerspace on and created these story sets, there's a number of, of stories at different levels that deal with nutrition, that deal with health and safety, that deal with dealing with sickness or illness. Um, that deal with medicines. Um, and so curating those and aligning them to your chapter 
uh, is part of this project as well. And then I think we're short on time, but in the Jamboard, I'm not gonna leave the slides here, but um, slide uh, frame five of the Jamboard, if you have other resources that you know have great health literacy content that you use with students, go ahead and type those into frame five um, because we're interested in learning more about what's out there because those become, again, additional websites or resources such as Learning Chocolate or the Marshall Level Reading Program that participants can actively be involved in curating resources to align. Um, and then you'll also have the opportunity, if you know how to use Jamboard or if you love using some of these other tools that aren't even part of the project, or maybe you've already created something that goes with the Staying Healthy curriculum. We wanna give you opportunities to create. So if you are an EdTech whiz or a Jamboard whiz and there's an activity within your chapter that you're like, this would be perfect for say a categorization activity that we could do online. So this is from the nutrition chapter. I saw the My Plate the image and I thought this would be great to do a Jamboard where students can find images of different food foods and then categorize them within this jam. So I can find broccoli and that's a vegetable or I could find green beans, find the image and then place it in the category that it belongs. So we are welcoming your creativity because many of the tools and actually like one of the um, templates that we're using came from an EdTech Makerspace participant who created this really cool vocabulary jam board that we are now using as a template in this project. And so educators are so creative and we love learning from each other. And so you have the opportunity to also create your own activities as part of this project. And so here's the uh, sequence of the project. And I know we're running up against the 1230 mark. Um, so starting next week is the first session. And these are all 90 minute sessions um, where we're going to train on a different tool. We train in the tool, talk about how it's used and then walk through in detail how you will create the, the specific activities and you're provided templates for each of these. So session one will be February 11th on Jamboard. Session two will be February 25th on um, Quizlet and session three will be March 18th on Wakelet. And the training format is each 90 minute training, we cover the how to, so how to use the tool, um, strategies for how to integrate it. And then we walk through very detailed templates that you get access to. So step-by-step, step, how to create this activity using the tool, sorry, let me go backwards. And then we organize the entire project within Google Classroom. And so if you decide to join, you'll be invited to this Google Classroom starting next week. And um, after each training, we will release the quote unquote assignment. So to create your Jamboards or to create your Quizlets um, and provide all of the resources that you need to do it. And then you will work asynchronously with your team to develop out and determine who's going to make what for your chapter. Um, we encourage folks to also asynchronously create and review each other's work so that we make sure that all of the resources are done according to the templates. And so for completion of this uh, training, uh, those three sessions, so the Wakelet, the Quizlet, and the Jamboard sessions, you need to attend all three of those. And then also have created at least one Jamboard or one Quizlet. So there's a finite number of activities within each chapter. So if we have say 20 something people that participate, there's definitely opportunity for everyone to create at least one, uh, hopefully two. And then collaborative work in creating the chapter wakelet. And if you do that, if you participate uh, as is listed here and complete all of these requirements, you'll be entered into a raffle to win a Southwest Airlines uh, flight voucher, which is very cool. And thank you for the Florida Literacy Coalition for making that available. Um, we at the EdTech Center also issue badges for um, folks who be, are experts in content areas or experts in EdTech tools. And so in addition to certificate for completing this project, if you curate additional resources for any chapter, like I listed with Learning Chocolate or Reading Skills for Today's Adults, um, you can earn your Health Literacy Leader Badge. And if you develop a new activity, such as that jam board we're categorizing for the food groups, and that gets added to the, the uh, library of resources, then you earn your EdTech Leader badge from the EdTech Center. 
So very quickly, next steps. Um, if you are interested in participating, uh, if Rachel, you can share the registration form in the chat, that would be excellent. And I'm hoping that Nicole and Greg will send it out in follow-up email um, to anyone who registered. And then once you've registered, be on the lookout for a Google uh, Classroom invite from us starting next week, where we'll bring you in and, and just give you all of the resources you need to be able to get up and running right away on February 11th. Um, also asking for you to, once you have that, sign up for the chapter that you're interested in working on. That's going to be first come, first serve. Um, so hopefully once you've um, been added to the Google Classroom, you will uh, will have a tool for you to be able to go into and select the chapter uh, within which book that you want to work on. And there'll be caps for the number of folks that can work within each team. And then finally, get ready to contribute, um, collaborate, and have fun. Um, this is a this is a collaborative process. It's super fun. Um, everyone gets really engaged, and everyone can enter and leave at the at the points of comfort that best suit them. Um, so it's a really great way for us to channel our energies together, learn together, and create together, and build something that's going to make staying healthy even more widely uh, available for use in a number of different contexts. Are there any questions? I know we've gone over, and I'm guessing Rachel's um, answered a lot of questions. Just one, really. <laughs> um, someone asked if they can't make it to all three sessions, and I think just remember that this is a whole project, so if you have to miss a part of it, um, there are ways that we can get people caught up, but you'd have to be committed to, to doing some of that catching up work. Um, outside of the synchronous sessions so that you can stay on track with your with your group. So uh, that's the only thing I would say about having to miss a session. Any other questions? All right. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Rachel and Jeff, we're really excited about this project, you know, professional development with a purpose. Uh, it really, I think it, it uh, it encapsulates that in a, in a really unique way using these tech tools to really make really interesting and engaging content available to our students around health literacy. So thank you, Rachel and Jeff. Thank you, EdTech Center. Thanks to the Florida Department of Education for their support in making this project possible. And we really encourage you to, to sign up and participate in this. I think it's a unique opportunity and, and um, we look forward to, to working with you on the project. Thank you. So if Looking there's nothing else, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Um, and I appreciate your taking time out of your afternoon this afternoon to join us. Y'all take care. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.